Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dan. Uh, we're doing part two of Quarantine Questions today with Ant. If you haven't seen part one, there's a link up here somewhere. Um, I'll uh, link you to that. I'd recommend watching that. Um, if you are new here, if you could click that little DVA YouTube icon in the bottom right hand corner, that subscribes you to the channel and keeps you up to date with all our content. Um, let's get straight into the video. Describe a time when you've had to work with a difficult client. Well, obviously, um, as a production manager, <laughs> you have to work with no, loads of different yeah. clients. And uh, Yeah, so I'd just say there's quite a few, um, but, you know, you just do the best job that you can. Yeah. Um, and you have to manage expectations sometimes. That's just part of the job. Um, and it is difficult, but, you know, you have to work with the people that you are given. Yeah. Um, <laughs> As in, and you know, you are there to provide a service. Um, so be friendly with your clients. That's all I can say. <laughs> Very well, <laughs> yeah. very well said. Um, should we move on to next one then? Yeah. Um, what would you regard as the most difficult part of sound engineering? Or you can do project <laughs> management up to you. The, the, okay, so sound engineering, the best. The the most difficult part is others coming up to you saying, oh, I can do a better job than you or yeah. having that um kind of if you if you're with a different group of engineers or like some more engineers on site, um, they go, Oh, oh your your uh, your snare drum doesn't quite sound you yeah. know, as yeah. what I wanted it to be. And I'm like, Well, it's not you mixing, it's me. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, come and fix it. Yeah. Or yeah. <laughs> leave me alone. Yeah. Um and Sometimes creating a mix can be quite difficult um, if you've got a lot of mid-frequency devices such as keys and guitars, making sure that that kind of area sticks out not, um, you know, nicely. I've had instances where keys and guitar just almost cancel each other out. So sure. just be a bit careful with that kind of frequency range. But um, other than that, yeah, it's cool. Um, I didn't really put anything for project managers, the most difficult part. Um it's I obviously tying part, it's in part, 30 it? odd technicians yeah. and making sure that the project is in a good place um so yeah yeah i mean sometimes <laughs> you've got like two or three install days and you don't want to get too much done on the first yeah. day but you also don't want to leave everything to the last day it's like you don't want to have the third day there the is install. a fine line yeah there is a fine line um i've worked out and I would always say on that first day is almost like a free day that you need Smash to make sure possible. you're in a good place for the second day. And yeah. don't forget that exhibitors arrive on the second day. So you uh, yeah, <laughs> you need to make sure you're prepared for that. So um, it's mainly about scheduling, really, I guess. Um, and sometimes your schedule goes out the window. I've had a lot of jobs where that happened. Sure. Um but you've just got to judge the situation as it goes along, really. Yeah, man. So, yeah. Um, favourite consoles is the next question. <laughs> uh, so, my favourite console, I've got a few, um, depending on what level you are doing. Uh, first is, is the Digico SD series. Um, I'm a big fan of them. Uh, I use one at uni it's SD, on the SD9, um, and it's really cool. Um, it can do a lot of things. Um, and provide you with a lot of things that yeah, you man. can do to it. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've I've I I would say that that's probably my number one sound desk. Um, and the SSLs as well is also on that level. Um, sure. and it's pretty very close between the two. Um, the the more kind of uh, I don't know budget desks i would say um uh probably the yamaha cl ql series they are really cool um mm -hmm. obviously offering dante and you can do a lot with dante these days so yeah um yeah this and with the auto mixer inside um it's really cool for the job that we do um and then the last is the Soundcraft expression. Now, I know a lot of you are going to literally slate me for saying this expression, uh, but I have learned from it, for, learned on it from quite, you know, I've used it for the last 10 years. Um, yeah. And it's not the most ideal desk, but it 
handles your capabilities fine. Um, it does have a few little bugs. Um, I it's a very colourful out... desk. Yeah, yeah. I realised when they brought out the update that when you went to the graphic EQ, it, it took the master out, which isn't great. Really? Um, oh, yeah. Um, one of the technicians had that, apparently. Um, I didn't see it happen, but, I mean, it's one of those where you go, okay. Um <laughs> But yeah, I like the desk. It's a cool, cool little compact desk, um, and it me and you does... have used it quite a lot, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, we have. <laughs> yeah. What What can you say about it? <laughs> um, so I've used your. So you've got three or four or five expressions four. on the Night yeah. in You. So they're the expression ones. I've used other companies' expression twos, which are like the thirty-two channel frame, and then yep. I've used the impacts, which have got they're essentially the same, but they've got a little yep. scribble strip on, and. I mean, I think I'd prefer the 90 new frame and then just having two layers rather than the full yeah. frame just for size and stuff. Um, their EQ is not my favorite. I feel like you have to do plus or minus 6 dB to be able yeah, to hear actually, any that kind of good, thing. Yeah, good point. It's like, um, I haven't um, used it in a while. But, uh. um, <laughs> but I mean, for a beginner, everything's literally there right in front of you, just like an X32's yep. got everything in front of you. You can just press the select channel to see which channel yep. you're using. Then you can see now, the <laughs> copy and paste feature kind of works sometimes, doesn't yeah. always work, which is a bit I've annoying. Had it, had it not work sometimes. Um, yeah. As you brought the X thirty two up, um, I'm not a big lover of the X thirty two, and that's nothing. It. That's nothing against Behringer. Um, well, as it <laughs> sort of is, <laughs> slightly. Um, but it's just the fact you have to tap buttons and then to get to menus. It's a terrible user then, interface, and there's no touch screen. And I, I mean, the only time I like using one is when I've got an iPad. Yeah. <laughs> or when someone else has set it up, and I just have to press f- push faders and. Do a little yeah. bit of tweaking. Like, yeah. Just hate those desks. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Um, the VI series as well, uh, Soundcraft, um, yeah. are pretty cool, especially for monitors um, with the amount of output capabilities that, that the VI series has. Um, the VI1 is the one that I've used before, and it's really cool. Um, nice. Looks a bit like a spaceship the, as well, doesn't it? The 4,000 and the 6,000 are about eight foot long, so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, all good, but, yeah. Yeah, they're, sometimes they're cool hard to get desks, into a theatre or <laughs> into the, yeah. wherever you want to pick. Yeah, they're big, aren't they? <laughs> uh, what about your favourite PA sound system? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so my favourite PA has to be DMB. Um, I put here Y series, but um, I would say that any DMB sounds cool. Um, I've actually in this lockdown been playing around with their so- a, a ray calc software nice um Good job. so it's 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 straightforward ish um but you've just you need to dedicate some time to learn it and understand how it works um yeah so yeah the dmb is probably my favorite um l acoustics um i haven't really heard of it at uh, heard of it myself but i've heard a lot of technicians like it um and i really want to just hear an array of acoustics um the martin mla is cool uh, anything really by martin audio um i've you got to say is a good good speaker i mean um, anything at that kind of pr- pr- yeah. about anything at that sort of price bracket be it acoustics martin dnb yeah. are all all sound really good at yeah. that price level so uh yeah um and logic no i'm joking not logic <laughs> <laughs> logic makes speakers yeah uh, what about <laughs> the best artists you've worked with or worked uh, alongside so i would say kevin mcleod is a good one um he's really cool um and you know Funny he's guy. yeah he's uh he he knows his stuff um and it's fairly you know f- he's, he's a good guy um and yeah um he's probably my favorite artist um and also i put here that i had uh, a jersey boys tribute um nice band and they were really cool to work with um and they have four vocal mics uh four stage monitors um and uh, a backing track um so they're quite easy to please but it's um you know they're really cool cool guys and yeah. they work um a lot of gigs um and they know what they want but it's really quite good easy to satisfy them um so yeah they're my two i'd say 
<laughs> nice man. Uh, what about worst food or experience on the road? Um, so I, the worst food I've had, right, is there was um, there's obviously there was there was a conference that I did, um, and they literally so for food like we'd been we'd been working from quite early in the morning, um, and it was like lunchtime, and they came out and it was quinoa, and I, <laughs> <laughs> I I'm not the biggest fan of quinoa, and I just don't really like it uh but i was just like i don't want to eat this so yeah <laughs> uh that was probably my worst um the other one was uh we were staying in a and b um in lincoln and <laughs> it was like 10 past nine uh, at night and they served they we asked them for food um and all i can describe it as is a microwave meal um Ooh, so, lovely. Yeah, yeah it wasn't wasn't the best but yeah they're probably my two worst <laughs> what about um, you what's your worst <laughs> i mean i mean obviously no food is the worst kind of food. yeah yeah um, we've had some pretty horrendous ones as well i did one where i got to site it was like a christmas um award slash piss up for <laughs> whatever company it was miles away from manchester so i drove yeah. down from manchester thankfully they had some other guys installing it and then i had to get there for like 2 p.m but i was stay on site till like 6 a.m to get all in the truck and away because of how much stuff there was um so got there thankfully i thought ahead and kind of had a mcdonald's before leaving um and then it was like 10 30 when our food was going to be bought out and yeah. um i'm allergic to cheese yeah. and <laughs> they bought out like lasagna and then it was just like i <laughs> oh, had <mate. laughs> like a plate of um salad so it was like spinach and cucumber and i had some water and then we carried yeah. on we just did the rest All of right. the show it was just like oh well, well, well. At, least, um, at least it was kind of healthy i guess yeah it was just like oh you start Should looking around probably... and going, "What can I? What can I yeah. eat?" Like this tape looks quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it literally, it was in the middle. It was in a cr- country uh, hall hotel kind of thing in yeah. the middle of nowhere. There's like, even if I drove off site, there wasn't like a McDonald's around the corner to like yeah. go to. I was just like, "Oh, I guess I'll get something." Uh, so I literally always, on the way home back to there's, Manchester, there's I got always like a 7 a. McDonald's a. around the corner. Yeah, I got a Apart seven a.m. McDonald's breakfast. <laughs> on the way home and that was kind of like my first food since leaving yeah. like first proper food since like getting out at 2 8 at 2 p.m oh, man it's one of them isn't it not fun is it no yeah. and then ever since then i carry around like huel bars or cereal bars yeah. or whatever just because yeah. do you put it in your pelly case and put then... it in my pelly in my rucksack leave and then some when in you the put, car. put your drill yeah. on top of it it just smashes it in two and then you can't eat it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, I mean, the drill gets nice and warm sometimes on site. Oh, it warms right, yeah. it all up for so, you. So it's it, good. So it melts it. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. <laughs> uh, uh, I've put Dante, yes or no. So this is like digital networking, um, yep. digital multis versus analog multis kind of question. But I know me and you use Dante quite a bit for different shows. Yeah. So I would say yes and no to Dante. Um, I really like the concept that you can plug devices in over IP um, and it's all in one package um, but I have seen it fail once I oh, know I haven't seen it fail sorry um, but sometimes um, it is hard to connect um, with other devices um, yeah. I've been in a situation where you, the QL was just not talking to the stage box um, and it's down to the point where there's a firmware update needed or oh, things really? like that that just you know throw you but now that i've done the dante uh certificate um training certificate uh program um, one, two, it and should be three. A, uh, one and two three is extremely difficult uh, yeah i started three and haven't finished yeah, it yet um but yeah you it's it's now that I've done that, I feel like I've got a little bit of a better knowledge of if something did go yeah a little bit wrong, then you could jump in and fix it. So yeah. Um also use Maddy as well, haven't we? So um Maddy is cool. Um you can only go one way with Maddy to and from. Um you can't plug additional devices in as yeah. far as I know. Um so maybe 
in you know in the future we might see that happen and it might be a better system for that kind of thing but I think Maddie on the whole has been cool um I've not really seen it fail that I know of. <laughs> no it's only been cable failures that we've yeah. only I've seen a few times Oh, so what about your favourite mic um, for like kick drum, snare drum, guitar, amps, vocals? Cool. So vocals, I put 58. You can't go wrong with 58. Um, You're on more mic now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just like the pickup pattern um, and the clarity of a dynamic mic is good. Um, the other one is the E835, which is the Sennheiser version, which you've You've got I'm on right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is same sort of principle. Um kick drum is a D one one two, which is good. Um and the D six from Audix. Um at the minute we use an Audix drum set kit. Um and I've not really had any problems with them. I think they sound good. Um yeah. snare is a fifty seven. Um, good old fifty-seven or C four one four. If you're going to go condenser, um, yeah, probably not I would, on a live show. Yeah, <laughs> um, if you put the four one four underneath and you get the resonance from the snares, um, I like that kind of sound. Um, so that's cool. And I've also put here Audix, but I can't remember which number might the i five. Yeah. I five. Got one right here on a D six. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like MacBook Pro. <laughs> 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 yeah um guitar i put 414 again or 57 um and any dpa mics in general i think sound really good um yeah i've used them a bit um and i would say that that they 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 they're, they're good sounded um we i've had experience with the headset version of dpa um yeah and I can just say that it's a good sounding mic and it often is resilient to any kind of sweat or any kind of yeah, um, yeah kind of problems. So, yeah, DPA. <laughs> nice, man. Um, what about your favourite audio position to work in? So, obviously, you've got, like, front of house, um, monitors, patch, um, RF tech, system tech, broadcast tech. Um, yeah. Which one would you uh, go so for? So my favourite one out of that lot is front of house. Um, sure. I just enjoy mixing for a crowd, um, using creative effects, um, and just, you know, front of house is, you know, probably the best position that I could think of. Um, what I enjoy doing also is system tech and RF tech, um, which I'm pretty good at if I'm smoking mine cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> um so i yeah i'd say that um system tech and half tech is, is is you know i'd still enjoy that so yeah, yeah. just to put into perspective on these big exhibition shows rf yeah. wise we yeah. normally cater for around 60 odd. yeah 70 yeah. old mics um normally we use um sure um axiant digital and a bit of ULXD, that's correct, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's so, been a while so now. sure is is normally normally yeah. the one. Um, um which... and there is a lot of coordination that goes on pre show. Yeah. Um and I've also had Ofcom come to site um and just to make sure that we are on the right frequencies. Um so yeah, I'd say that that is also part of my kind of management pre planning. Um yeah. is <laughs> making sure that nothing gets interfered with um i've had a lot of technicians that have had interference um and it's you always carry a few spares um in case that is the case so yeah yeah i mean normally the interference isn't from our system it's normally no. other exhibitors turning up with their own pa or like yeah. the tv or, crew come in or press or whatever yeah very unhelpfully on normally 38. <laughs> yeah, on channel thirty eight, which which is normally wiped out anyway. Yeah. Had, yeah. Or or well, actually, yeah, or their own like forty or forty two, which is exactly yeah. where you want to be. Yeah. So it's like we've paid for this ideal. frequency. Yeah. Goodbye. Go away, please. I was gonna say, and then you end up walking around the exhibition looking for radio mic packs. <laughs> yes. And uh yeah, that's always fun. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, or you have like 
you've got a strict um, thing from the clients about noise issues. So you have like silent conference disco kind of yep. things on different exhibition breakout stands. And then you'll have someone turn up with their own speaker they bought from um, <laughs> Matlin, <laughs> Matlin or doesn't exist. Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they'll just come in and turn it up nice and loud. You just hear this squeaking going on throughout yeah. the day. And me and Kino to be like, oh, was that one of my mics? And then like someone else yeah. will be on the on the group oh it wasn't me who was it and then yeah. we eventually get to the bottom of it and there'll be some Somebody random in the middle of the floor yeah just on whatever they want yeah <laughs> doing whatever they want <laughs> it's just like oh what about in-ears or wedges uh i'd have to say in-ears um just because you get more control um and the monitor guy's not pulling his hair out because the mic is a foot away from a wedge um and yeah the musician is loving it um yeah. so I, so i would say that uh in is is just is just is it's easier you can get more you can get whatever you you want in your mix in it in is um and you have a lot more control with with Definitely. that kind of system so love them um i also like wedges but it's you yeah i'd say in is <laughs> yeah think for specific tasks maybe wedges but yeah like 90 percent of the time now i'm pushing in ears over yeah. everything just for quieter how many, stages how many bands how many bands have you got now that are still mixing you're still mixing them on, on wedges um hmm. it's about half only, half only like the function bands where i turn yeah. up to do a gala dinner kind of thing all the bands i work with regularly are all on ears yeah. And like the shows we do, we only put out a pair of wedges for them, for their dancers to come and dance along and we'll just put the track in there so they can hear where they are in the song. Yeah. Because not all dancers have in ears, which <laughs> is something we should probably look at, to be honest. <laughs> well, how many are there? Uh, there's normally like four dancers, two oh, girls right. and a guy or two guys or four girls, depending on depending on the show. Um yeah, but if it's just track, it's not the end of the world, yeah, is it? Really? Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Normally, you, you can probably hear it off front of house anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but just put them some wedges out just in case. Just turn the array around to the front of yeah, the stage. Yeah. You're all good. <laughs> yeah, no, no one in the audience needs to hear this. We'll just yeah. put it on the stage for the dancers. What about, uh, so we've got to the last question here. What about your favorite tool in your toolkit, favorite tool in your pelly? Uh, so my favorite tool would have to be a laser measure um yeah just because you often need to measure dif distance um and a tape measure who wants a tape measure now they're so old school <laughs> um <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <laughs> like you know it always comes in handy when you need it um and the other one would be a screwdriver a boring old screwdriver or pliers um because likewise you never know when you might need a screwdriver um to take a plug apart or yeah. to take a piece of apart um if it stopped working for example um so yeah um that, those are my main tools I yeah say. man i've um is it a lexia Le lexia um d1 the laser measure yeah Bought one of them recently and uh i've got yeah. in my penny case i've got what is it a 40 meter tape measure whatever the standard size <laughs> one is and uh it's Just like the size of your bag no, I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> revolutionized my um yeah. measuring um, just made it so much quicker and stuff. I don't know why I didn't buy one before. Mental. Yeah, like why are you still going around with a tape measure? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's useful I mean, it's for good some to measure. things like it's cutting good. wood or whatever if you need yeah. to do that. But or putting screens up. Yeah, <laughs> it's ideal for that. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I mean, to measure distance between a projector and a screen, laser measure all the way now, or yeah. delay speakers back to the main speaker so you can delay them on the desk kind of thing laser when a, when a data tech goes i haven't got enough room for this rear projection and you go you just make well, it work <laughs> you do <laughs> and now. you're like well let's let's uh measure this with this laser measure uh and it's correct uh yeah. <laughs> that's always so good uh but yeah thank you for that mate that has been no an worries. absolute pleasure um yeah. is there anything you want to say before we sign off be one. Be positive. Life is one. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Uh, and uh, happy Wednesday. Motto there. Happy Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? It is Wednesday, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, mate. So, yeah, thank you so much for coming on uh, Quarantine Questions, mate. And I'm sure no we'll worries. work together again soon. Yeah. Um, until then, I'll see you soon. Have a good one, mate. Hi, guys. Thank you for watching Quarantine Questions with Ant. 
Um, if you like what you saw, um, if you click that bottom right hand corner that subscribes to the channel. Um, otherwise, we'll see you again in another video. Cheers, guys. Bye.